Last year in Formula One, the midfield battle was incredibly tightly fought. Renault, Toro Rosso, Racing Point and Alfa Romeo were all within a 35-point bracket by the end of the season. Although McLaren was very much best of the rest, the best of the rest of the rest would often change from round to round. Even Haas managed it a couple of times in the early part of the season. Let's delve into the midfield launches and see what sense we can make of the changes for 2020. Alfa Romeo unveiled its car on Valentine's Day during a shakedown at Fiorano. Dressed in a snakeskin livery, the new C39 also bore a number of key design changes over its predecessor. Alfa's press release waxed lyrical about the symbolism of a snake shedding its skin, but thankfully it omitted any visual evidence of the car doing so at the end of its shakedown. This is Formula One after all, it's not a David Attenborough documentary. But Alfa gained some brownie points for making its snorkel design into the shape of the grille typically seen on its fleet of road-going vehicles. Changing the shape of the snorkel probably has no real aerodynamic effect, but it's a nice little detail to talk about. The nose nostrils are retained and the resulting pathway goes onto a small cape, something Alpha added midway through last year, and that should add to the overall front end downforce. The team has also stuck to its guns with the sweeping front wing design, although the car was shaken down with the full five element arrangement similar to which it used at the end of last season. For the majority of 2019, the car ran with the top two flaps fused together, but opted for a more conventional arrangement to its unconventional concept. While the S-duct remains on top of the chassis bulkhead, the set of fins seen in that area on last year's C38 have not been carried over. The C39 has a marginally more conventional arrangement to its bargeboard package, if there's such a thing as a conventional bargeboard package these days. The pre-bargeboard is broken up into a handful of different elements, while the main panel and the upper serrations are a lot more similar to the Mercedes bargeboard design. The team retains boomerangs for 2020, and these amounted to a new set of turning vanes. Alpha has once again delivered a tight side pod design, and the packaging on the C39 is no different. Unlike its other Ferrari-powered counterparts on the F1 grid, the team likes to package some of its cooling components inside the engine cover. The split intake design has been abandoned, opting now for a triangular central intake while retaining the rounder cooling inlet further back. On the face of it, the Alfa Romeo doesn't seem to have changed a great deal, but detailed touches suggest a strong overhaul of the C38 package. Alfa was always there or thereabouts last year, and seems set for another season in the midfield mix. A new year, a new livery and a new name. Say goodbye to Toro Rosso and hello to Alfa Tori for 2020. But it's still the same team under the skin which scored two podiums last year as the team made the most of the chances that came its way. On the face of it, AlphaTauri AT01 is not wildly different to last year's STR14. The car perhaps has been slightly Red Bullified, but that's thanks to its arrangement to use components designed for the lead outfit. Using old spec designs, albeit built as new, AlphaTauri has a tried and tested front-running set of components that it didn't even have to expend any resource on developing itself. That extends from the gearbox and the engine intake system to the brakes and suspension, including the multi-link front suspension used last season. Since Jody Egginton took over as technical director, this new direction helped the team to boost its reliability by putting the freed up resources into other areas of the team. The budget for Alfa Tori is smaller than Red Bull's, and thus the team can't develop designs quite with the same level of sophistication, but it can still pick the fruits of Red Bull's labour. But there are differences, and AlphaTauri retains the inboard loaded front wing concept that it used last season, unlike Red Bull's deeper wing. There's a distinct Red Bull influence in the S duct outlet, where it features a winglet bridging over the top to improve the guidance of airflow along the bulkhead. The turning vanes around the side pod are no doubt influenced by those seen at Ferrari, where the horizontal element turns upwards, and AlphaTauri has used this to connect to the boomerang, which attaches to the front face of the bargeboards. Those barge boards look somewhat similar to last year's design, which are quite compact and nestle neatly within the allowed bounding box, while other teams take more liberties to smartly place components outside of the restrictions. Like last year, the main barge board components are made up of three panels broken up, but feature all the trimmings to get the aero working harder. There's also a selection of small vortex generators nestled on top of the side pods, sat next to the repositioned mirrors featuring, like many, the shroud around the top to trim some of the drag from the mirror assembly. Further Red Bull design cues are evident in the new air intake, which strays from the style used last season where the opening was divided into three distinct inlets, and moves towards the Red Bull horizontal split. With Honda continuing its progress in the powertrain stakes, AlphaTauri continues to showcase some incredibly slender bodywork, 
giving the airflow a clear path towards the rear of the car and improving the diffuser. Although the two podiums last year came in fortunate circumstances, it's testament to the team that the cars could run in those positions and make the most of some manic races. They'll be hoping for more of the same in 2020. After a difficult 2019, Williams has started its year right and has a car ready for pre-season testing. A new red, blue and white livery certainly looks minty fresh and certainly looks a lot cleaner than last year's concept. The FW43's front wing is largely the same as the design Williams ended last season with. For those final flyaway rounds, the team introduced its own version of an inboard loaded wing geometry. Mounting the outboard sections below the notch in the end plate, the team has managed to improve the amount of airflow turned around the front of the car. That also includes a tiny little flick at the end of the footplate, which trips air upwards and outwards. Although the nose remains largely the same, Williams has extended the cape section it used at the end of last year. Further details at the front end include the redesigned camera pod mountings, with the addition of the small horns at the front of the chassis bulkhead which make use of a small box in the regulations intended for the chassis to nose transition. These horns are noticeably cambered to turn airflow outwards. The front suspension components have received some attention too, and last year's rather ungainly top wishbone mounting to the upright has been tightened up significantly. Although the barge boards and turning vanes are vastly similar to last year's car, there are some additional interesting details. On top of the boomerang, there are six flow conditioners, which fire air at the side pod undercut, aiming to improve the flow to the rear of the car. The side pods, particularly at the leading edge, have been tightened up to give the aerodynamicist more area to play with down the flanks. With a distinguished channel over the top, airflow is sent to the floor, energizing the air passing to the back of the car to boost diffuser performance. With a much larger shark fin on the engine cover, it suggests that Williams has been able to address its packaging for the benefit of improving its aero. Although the midriff does look more bulbous than some of its counterparts, the car still looks a lot tighter than last season. And the bottom line is that it can't be worse than 2019. Thankfully, Williams' car looks like a good step forward. Okay, this is more of a livery launch than a car launch, but bear with me here. For the final season of the Racing Point name before the team becomes Aston Martin, the RP20 will be dressed in significantly more pink for the new season, after the departure of title sponsor Sport Pacer. BWT, the Austrian water treatment company, has now taken the title sponsor role and has daubed its logo diagonally across the flanks of the car. Just in case you couldn't see it, of course. We'll see the full RP20 brake cover and testing, but it's a little bit of a tease to just have a livery launch. But I suppose it's better than nothing. Renault penciled in its launch event for the 12th of February, but the tenuous title of season opener suggested more might be at play. By the end of the day, we were treated to nothing more than four glimpses of the car. And sure, that's what Renault promised on its social media channels, but was anyone else left feeling a little bit disappointed? There's a few details we can pick out, and there's a hint of a tapered nose and a few aero changes for the 2020 car. But to be quite honest, you'd be better off showing nothing. There's a suggestion of an all-black livery scheme, but we won't know whether that's just a testing-only scheme or, well, we'll be there until the season starts. We don't know. The suggestion is that Renault is working right up to the deadline on the car, and that it didn't really want to release a fake one, presumably to stop people like us from speculating, but where's the fun in that?